And so you're there where we need to be. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is, who was, and whoever shall be. Welcome to our special Good Friday service here at the Vineyard. Hallelujah. We're located at 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia. We're in the living room right now. In the midst of it, another big place is holding their camp meeting, and that is Jimmy Swaggart Ministries holding their camp meeting this year. We want to give moral support to them as they preach the word to all the world, and as we are doing, preaching the word to all the world as well. Amen. I just praise God right now for the opportunity to preach this special Friday night service here at the Vineyard. Hallelujah. First of all, we we will come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that there's unspoken prayer requests that are online right now, and those that will become spoken by way of typing when it pops up on that YouTube video that this ministry and this sermon will go to. Father, we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus to help us commemorate your sacrifice. The fact that you gave so that we might live in you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for the sacrifice given at Calvary. We give you all the praise for the Holy Spirit that you sent to us, that spirit of truth that you said would come to us, Lord Jesus. Father, all these things in this book, from Genesis to Revelation, you gave to us for us to hearken unto, to be comforted by, to obey, and to remember. Jehovah, it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen Amen and and amen. amen. Before I start the sermon tonight, if you have not heard from anyone else that Jehovah loves you, and so do I, I say it tonight, here and now, that if Jehovah loves you so much that He gave Jesus Christ as His one and only Son to be that sacrifice nailed to the cross at Calvary, if you have not heard yet that Jehovah loves you, Jesus Christ loves you, and so do I, then you hear it tonight, ladies and gentlemen, in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you, Jehovah loves you, and Jesus loves you, and that Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, loves you too. Otherwise, none of it, not this ministry, not Jehovah, not Jesus Christ, not the Holy Spirit, would be with us at this point in time. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lamb. Amen. Tonight... We lead in the story of the journey, the passion of Jesus Christ. Where he went down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem, leading to that dirt path up to Golgotha. And... If anybody remembers that movie, The Passion of the Christ, um, Jim Cavazel played Jesus Christ. Mel Gibson directed that movie. In interviews, Mel Gibson said there were a lot of things that had to be toned down for it to get the rating from the Motion Picture Association of America that it got. Otherwise, it would have been NC-17. That is how savage and that is how bad Jesus Christ was scourged, whipped, beaten, nailed, tortured, and killed at the behest of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I'm sorry about getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's read up to that point. Y- 
yesterday, we or the last service that we did on Sunday, we got all the way to the end of 17 where he prayed, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. A few chapters back, when Jesus Christ said that I and my Father are one. When Jesus Christ said that, they assumed He was saying He was God. My friends, I'm here to tell you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees got this one wrong. You ever had a rumor or something that was said, that was attributed to you, but you know in your heart you didn't say it that way? I have on plenty of occasions. And it would, when I was thinking in the flesh and living in the flesh, it would infuriate me so much that someone, somewhere, would misinterpret what I say and how I say it as the gospel truth. We begin at the first verse of chapter 18 in the book of John. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden. The the garden in another part of the New Testament is called Gethsemane. And Gethsemane was where a song that was sung by the Gaithers attributes Gethsemane. And it was a beautiful song that I remember years and years ago listening to almost nonstop, four, five, six times on YouTube. Gethsemane, my Savior prayed there. On Calvary. He paid it all. I don't know if that's the words for it. It's been so long since I played that song. But that garden over the brook Cedron. He entered with his disciples there. Verse 2. And Judas also which betrayed him. Judas Iscariot. Remember that name well. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place where Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things, let me say it again. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? That's the title of my sermon tonight. Whom seek ye? Seek ye. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then, as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. 
Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou... Art not thou the one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. This was a dangerous time. When the Pharisees and Sadducees were looking to quash Christianity before it could get off the ground and keep believers of Jesus Christ under their thumb. Much like the present day church that's hypocritical. They want to keep the flesh and blood people that are in the pews under their thumb so they give them things to do in the church. Believe not the hypocrites. Believe my word, saith the Lord. And this was the first time that he denied Christ in verse 17. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And they said therefore unto him, Are not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did I not see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again. And immediately the cock crew. In other words, before that rooster crowed, Peter denied Jesus three times. Fulfilling the scripture that said, Before the cock crows, 
you will deny me thrice. And he did. And Peter did. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusations bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. And Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake, signifying what death he should die. And Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the, into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto him, Unto them, I find him in no fault at all. Pilate found no fault with Jesus Christ. Pilate continued in verse 39, But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. And said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto him, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that he may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto him, unto them, Behold the man! And the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him. They cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. And then, Pilate, then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered. I want you to listen to this answer carefully that Jesus gave. In verse 11, Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered un me unto thee hath the greater sin. And 
And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Jesus Christ did not make himself a king. He told the truth by saying, He is the Son of God. That He and the Father are of one accord. But the Jews didn't believe Him. The Jews in the biblical time did not believe Jesus Christ. And there are many in the Holy Land today that still don't believe this. But for the respect of Christianity, they allow the Christians to have the tours and what have you to believe as this good book puts. Verse 13, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth, sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called pavement. But in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king! But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. The road that he was led down, there's a song by Sandy Petty called Via Dolorosa. That path on the way to Calvary. But at Golgotha, in verse 18, where they crucified him, and two others with him, on either side of one, and Jesus in the midst, the middle. That's why there's three crosses. Dogwood used to be a tree a long, long, long time ago, around this time. In later years after the crucifixion, the dogwood was made worthless. What's that song? By Dottie Rambo. If that isn't love, it talks about Golgotha and the splendor of heaven. So the song's called If That's Not Love. If That Isn't Love. If That Isn't Love. Song by Dottie Rambo. By Dottie Rambo. Thank you very much, Lisa. I appreciate you for that. And I hear Blake. In the midst of our service, I hear the cat that hangs around. I think he's right outside our front door. And the Lord just let me. <laughs> yeah, the Lord just told me to look it up. Look it up. Thank you very much. The only reason why I have my phone out is there is a Well, thank you very much, Lisa, my dear, my darling. And she's right here with us in the chapel. Yes, we got one seat, one end table, a high chair for the kid. So, just if you ever come over, you're either going to stand or sit or run camera, or whatever. (laughs) But if you'd like to help us, I'll have information at the end of the service here to tell you about that. But on either side of the big cross were the two crosses with the robbers. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross Jesus bare and said, The writing Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. 
This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. It was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments, made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Then therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my, my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he saith to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, put it on a hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. For when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And when he saw that it bare record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe, for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. The bone in him, of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture, and they shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices and the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden was a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, and for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. That was the day Jesus died. And they prepared his body. And they spent the Sabbath at home mourning, weeping. That's tomorrow. 
Some families will celebrate by having an Easter egg hunt or something like that. Others are commemorating his death tonight by holding a memorial, a service of sorts. My friends, we got to the part tonight where Jesus was put in that tomb. And he went to hell. And he fought the devil. On Sunday, during our sunrise service, you're going to celebrate you're going to celebrate because we know, we know what happened when that stone was rolled away and all you saw was the cloth where Jesus was. Where you saw where Jesus was. Hallelujah. And I say was, the past tense, because that morning, when Mary went there, Glory. the stone was rolled away Hallelujah. and an angel was there saying, Hallelujah. who are you looking for? Hallelujah. He is not here on, because he is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Amen. He is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Glory he is God. risen. Amen. Don't you want to be a part of the miracle story that Jesus Christ, because yes. you know if he rose on that third day, yes. you know he can pull you out of wherever you're yes, at. If can. you're in the midst of drugs, to addicted believe. to drugs and alcohol, yes. if, if you're overindulging in alcohol, he can rescue you from that. Yes. If you're overindulging in meth, if you're fooling around with fentanyl, he can yes. rescue you from that. Fentanyl does not have to be a killer, not if you let it. Not if you don't want it to be. That's right. In the name of Jesus, anybody that is addicted to drugs, meth, cocaine, heroin, any of those drugs, it can even be prescription drugs where you're having to get prescriptions illegally. If you're addicted to them, my God can deliver you from that. My God is Jehovah in the highest of heaven. And His Son is Jesus Christ who was put in that tomb and on the third day rose. I'm telling you, on the third day He rose and Sunday you'll hear about it. But if you want to be a part of this, if you want to be rescued in this, if you want to be like the thief that was crucified on the cross right beside Jesus Christ and rebuked his partner in crime, and then ask Jesus, would you remember me? Lord, remember me. If you want to hear what that thief said, there is a sermon on there. Lord, remember me. Better yet, I can just go to the scripture in Luke Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can tell you what that thief said. Come on, Brother Bartons. We're on a roll. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the thief said in verse 40 of Luke chapter 23 said, but the other answering rebuked him saying, Dost not Thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Amen. In verse 43, and, and Jesus did. said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That thief rebuked his partner, saying, Dost not thou fear God? Dost not thou fear God? 
God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Do you feel like you're condemned tonight? That drugs and alcohol and whatever it is that's holding you, pornography, adultery, are you held captive? Is there a chain around you? My God can release you from that chain. Amen. Glory to God. My God can release you from that addiction. Amen. My God can save your soul. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. My God can save. My God can deliver. Amen. He can do all things. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. Jesus Christ was nailed to that cross for us. And the Jehovah's Witnesses can say what they want about it. But I know the truth. Because the Holy Spirit that is the comforter that Jesus promised, the Spirit of truth, bears witness. Hallelujah. On the day of your salvation, you receive it. That's right. Oh, what a feeling. What a good feeling that is. Hallelujah Amen. in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. But my God can save. Can my God anything. can deliver. He can do anything He wants. He can stop God time can right do now. Anything. And but make room for you. God can do anything. He can do anything but fail. There's another song. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail because he's never failed. His word has never returned void. Right. My God can save. Amen. My God can baptize with the Holy Spirit Amen. when you ask for it in Jesus' name. My God can save you from alcohol and drugs. My God can save you from pornography and adultery. My God can save you from the overindulgence of food. My God can save you from any sin. Amen. All you have to do is reach for His hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, reach for His hand. That nail-scarred hand that He had that nail through onto the cross. You can't tell me otherwise because the cross was where Jesus was nailed to. Where God saw His Son nailed to that cross. Amen. You can't tell me different because it says it right here. Jehovah inspired man to write this word from Genesis to Revelation. So if you're looking for the way out of pornography, of overindulgence of food, of drugs, of cocaine, of meth, of heroin, anything that's bound you and is pulling you to hell, my God can pull you out of hell and back to heaven. Amen. In Jesus' name. Romans 3.23 for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Romans 5.8 while we were yet sinners Christ, while we were sinners still God commended His love to us that He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, for our sins. In Romans 10, 9 through 13. Now I'm paraphrasing it because I'm trying to do it from memory, but it's still there. But if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. 
For when we believe in the heart, why do I try to memorize it? I can just go to the book. Why? We're going to start over at verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Now I know I illustrated the mic drop to say it is finished. When Jesus Christ gave up the ghost at Calvary, it was finished. Because the path laid for our salvation was completed. And the barricade will soon be opened up. Don't you want to be part of those saved and baptized? I've got to be very quick. I'm running out of battery strength on my mic. But here it is. Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we thank you. We thank you for the blessings that you poured out upon us. We thank you for the blessings that you're about to give to those that are praying this prayer with us. Father, they're lost. Those who are sin and living in sin, they are lost. And I'm praying right now that they are praying this prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm lost. I don't know my way back to you. But I'm going by faith that you will be pulling me back. I believe right now that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I receive him. I receive you, Jesus Christ. Let your Holy Spirit dwell inside me. Clean out anything and everything that is not of me and of you. And let whatever is of you fill me with the Holy Ghost. I believe it and I receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a sad time that Jesus was put into that grave. A lot of people in Christianity thought that was their end of their hope. That it was the end of the grace. But my friend, I'm telling you, on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, you will see it. On Sunday morning you will see it. You will see that He is alive. And that He has risen. And that He is. After tearing for some time here. To tell what hadn't been told. In the prior part of the ministry. That. He is. Alive. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. I thank you. God bless you. Have a good night. And we will see you next time. Sunday morning. Bright and early. Sunrise service. Huh? Sunrise service. Right after the sun comes up. I'll be preaching. Thank you Lord Jesus for this day. Send your prayer requests right now, jbmworldhq at live.com. I'm sorry, jbmprayer at live.com. If you'd like for us to come and preach, 
jbmworldhq at live.com. Call us at 706-977-6477 or visit us, jamesparkersministries.wordpress.com. You have a good night. God bless you. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, the Vineyard Broadcast, or the other ministry programs of James Barkus Ministries, visit us at jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. Visit us today. We're also back on Facebook.